hello guys it's your nurse heavy of smart nursing and this is our episode where we talk about everything ecg but before we know the readings before we go into the details of the ecg we need to understand how the reading is even generated in the first place and for that matter we will be tackling the cardiac conducting system today now if this is your first time of watching our video subscribe share this link leave a comment like our videos so that we can keep bringing you more thank you very much once again for tuning and let's go right into it all right so what is the cardiac electric system what is the cardiac conducting system now the cardiac conducting system is a group of group or a network of specialized nodes cells and signals that control and regulate your heartbeat a group of network of specialized cells that control and also regulate your heartbeat now the function basic functions of this system is to insert of a heartbeat signal when different parts of the heart needs to relax and contract and also regulates blood flow to your body so that is the main function of the cardiac electric system what that means is that before your heart beats before you feel a pulse on a patient a lot of electrical activities might have gone or a lot of electrical activities happen behind the scenes this happens in seconds or a fraction of seconds and then it leads to signaling of your muscles which are your myocardium or your endocardium to relax and contract at specific times in order to release blood or allow blood flow to your various parts of your body which leads to a pulse now let's look at the conducting pathway let's look at the conducting pathway it follows this as you can see here we have the sa node then it moves to the av node it goes to the bundle of his now the bundle of his is divided into two okay we have the the left bundle branches and also the right bundle branches now from the left and the right branches it goes to the Purkinje fibers in fact the whole of the bundle branches in the Purkinje fibers looks like an upside down tree so for example you have the bundle of his this way Let's assume this is your bundle of his. You have your branches. So this becomes your right bundle branch. This becomes your left bundle branch. And then off it, we have our Purkinje fibers. And so from the bundle of his to your left bundle branch or right bundle branch and the Purkinje fibers, it looks like that of an upside down tree. You already know that this is how a tree looks like stem these are branches and these are leaves okay but the little of his bundle branches and then the pecking the fibers looks you know like this turn upside down now let us look at how it appears like you know let's take this illustration as an example you can see that this represents a superior vena cava all right this our right atrium a left atrium a left ventricle and then a right ventricle so the sa node here is situated in the right atrium somewhere near the entrance of the superior vena cava so this is a superior vena cava so just at the entrance of the superior vena cava we have our sa node there and then down here is our AV node. This is our AV node, which receives signal from the SA node. Then from the SA node, we have our bundle of his here, which has divided into two, as you can see, our left bundle branch, our right bundle branch, and then off it are the Purkinje fibers. Let us look at how 
it appears like you know let's take this illustration as an example you can see that this represents a superior vena cava all right this our right atrium our left atrium a left ventricle and then our right ventricle so the sa node here is situated in the right atrium somewhere near the entrance of the superior vena cava so this is a superior vena cava so just at the entrance of the superior vena cava we have our sa node there and then down here is our av node this is our av node which receives signal from the sa node then from the sa node we have our bundle of his here which has divided into two as you can see our left bundle branch our right bundle branch and then off it are the Peckinje fibers so what does the SA node do what does the SA node do so the SA node is referred to as the natural pacemaker of the heart it is the natural pacemaker of the heart the SA node determines the pace of the heart basically now aside being the pacemaker or the natural pacemaker it is situated in the right atrium near the superior vena cava just as we said and then it is about five milliliters long and four milliliters wide that is for the sa node now the sa node is controlled by the autonomic nervous system we all know that the autonomic nervous system comprises of the sympathetic and then the parasympathetic. Sympathetic representing flight or fight, and then the parasympathetic representing the rest or digest, which means that now if it's time for the heart to contract or beat faster, the sympathetic system of the autonomic nervous system, which controls the SA node, will act and cause the heart rate to go up. Situations where maybe you're running or you're performing an activity that needs your heart rate faster or that needs blood to be pumped faster to organs of your body. Flight and fight from para F, sorry, from sympathetic system will come in and then control the SA node. If it's about rest and digest, your parasympathetic nervous system will be stimulated to act on the SA node. Now the AV node, which is about five milliliters long and five milliliters, the AV node receives signals from the SA node. And then its main function is to delay the signal. The AV node delays signal from the SA node by fractions of each second. Now for every second, there's a fraction that the AV node will delay the you know signal from the SA node and the reason why the AV node does that is to allow emptying of the atrium is to allow entry of the atrium both the, the atria the right atrium and then the left atrium the AV node delays the signal from the SA in order to allow the blood collecting in the right atrium to be emptied into the right ventricle and also blood in the left atrium to be emptied into the left ventricle and that is why the AV node is very very important now let's go to the bundle of his from the AV node signal comes to the bundle of his which is about 20 milliliters long and 4 milliliters wide it runs down the septum and receives signal from the, A uh, the AV node and then the signal goes to its branches, the bundle branches, both the right and the left, and then to the Peckinje fibers, just like it's illustrated here. So you see the signal coming to the bundle of it, and then it goes to the branches, then into the Peckinje fibers. Now, the fibers, after they receive signal from the bundle branches, they deliver it to the myocardium. The Peckinje fibers delivers the signals to the myocardium and causes them to contract and relax 
at appropriate times in order to pump blood out you know it's a ventricle that pumps blood out of the heart it's either the right is pumping the the right ventricle is pumping the blood to the lungs or the left ventricle is pumping blood to the aorta which will be distributed to all parts of the body and because of its muscular nature just like it's illustrated here the branches has been divided into two by nature and then off it comes a lot of Peckingy fibers. So when these Peckingy fibers are, you know, stimulated, they deliver the signal to the myocardium and the endocardium of the ventricles in order to cause them to contract and then also relax to be able to send blood out of the heart. And so basically, this is the function or the conducting pathway of the cardiac system which leads to controlling of our heartbeat and also regulating how blood flows to various parts of our body. So once again, we have signal coming from the SA node. We have signal coming from the SA node to the AV node, to the bundle of his, to the bundle branches, and then to the Peckingy fibers. Let's look at patients that can occur as a result of you know pathology to our cardiac conducting system we can have arrhythmias you know i'm sure you've heard of bradycardias you know tachycardias we've heard of ventricular tachycardia ventricular fibrillation we will have another video where we go into those rhythms into details but just for the benefit or for today's this topic we can have arrhythmias as conditions we can have bundle branch blocks what that means is that any of these bundles can be blocked and when these bundles are blocked it means that signal cannot go to that part of the heart that that bundle supplies okay so we can have bundle branch blocks we can also have heart blocks long qt intervals long qt intervals happens when you know the signal to the ventricle is slowed down and the ventricle slows in releasing the blood we can have long qt intervals in fact long qt intervals are very very important and so when it comes to medication we will look at you know patient teaching techniques or patient teaching areas that you can concentrate on when you want to improve or you want them to maintain their cardiac system but then low qt interval qt affected by certain drugs and so it is very important to allow or tell teach your patients to take their drugs as prescribed what i mean by qt intervals is that when you take an ecg you will have something like this first of all you're going to have Let's say this is your isoelectric line. Don't worry, we will go into this in details, but I just want to show you something here. So we have our isoelectric line. You can have a reading where there is this. You have your P here, then you have a Q, okay? Then you have an R, you have an S, and then you have a T. So this is how a normal rhythm, and this represents one full circle. This represents a pulse. Okay, don't worry. Like I said, we will explain this into details in another video. I just want to illustrate a QT interval to you. So this is our P wave. This is our Q wave. This is our R, our S, and then our T. And so... ECG readings are simply referred to as P, Q, R, S, T. Okay, so for QT interval, I am talking about here the beginning of our Q to the ending of our T. There's a normal value for it. We will go into it. And so when this and this prolongs more than the normal value then we say we have a prolonged qt and like i said some medications can affect it other you know conditions or situations can affect your qt interval and so you need to teach your patients when they are medications especially those cardiovascular or any drug that interacts with your cardiovascular system you need to take it on time now we can have premature ventricular contractions 
okay we can also have cardiac arrest or what we call the heart attack and so to give you a brief idea of this this p wave represents atrial contraction okay represents atrial contraction this represents the whole of the qrs represents a ventricular contraction and this represents ventricular realization the reason we don't have an atrial realization is because of the muscular nature of the ventricles this muscular nature overshadows the small muscles in the atrium and so whilst the atrium is trying to relax the ventricles are contracting and they are powerful and strong muscular nature overshadows the realization of this atrium that is why on the ecg you don't have anything that indicates an atrial realization okay you only have an atrial contraction and this whole thing represents ventricular contraction and this one represents ventricular realization okay premature ventricular contractions instead of this nice qrs you can have another reading that comes you know faster before this one comes in we will talk about this more in another video like i indicated but for the meantime the conditions that pathologists with your cardiac conducting system can give you now let's look at some symptoms you can have chest pain when you have problem with your conducting system you can have fainting you can have dizziness and you can also have fatigue so anytime you have any of these symptoms you need to suppress further when any patient comes to you with a chest pain with fainting with dizziness and fatigue talking about chest pain there's a video where we talk about a smart way of assessing your pain and so you can use that acronym to assess your patient's pain now patient teaching areas what can you tell your patient you talk about weight management okay no tobacco smoking they should be taking medications as prescribed like i said earlier it's very very important alcohol and tobacco are like you know two sides of a coin anytime you're avoiding one you need to avoid the other especially when you're dealing with cardiovascular pathologies now you need to have a healthy eating habit eat healthy balanced diet eat on time very very important have a stress management approach exercise as tolerated or at least do some 150 minutes every day that wouldn't hurt my but exercise as long as you can tolerate and so this brings us to the end of today's video we've been talking about the cardiac electric conducting system where we say that it involves the sa node the av node the bundle of haze and its right and left branches and also the pekinji fibers all right so thank you very much for watching once again, if this is your first time, don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notification bell so that the next time we upload a video, you will be the first to be notified. Like, share, comment on our videos and see you in the next video. Thank you.